Ruby, thanks very much for joining us. I want to start by being quite nosy because your backdrop looks very interesting. What's the picture of your right shoulder? Um, it is a painting of uh, my father and I uh, after one of the games in the Euros. I think it was... might have been after the England game, I'd say. I thought I was going to say, is that after you knocked poor old England out? Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean, we're almost four years since that day, obviously, this summer would be the next Euros. Mm -hmm. As we reflect back, that England night, one of the biggest, one of the best of your career? I think so, yeah. Definitely the most memorable. Um, it's, when you say it's four years, it's, it's crazy to think, think back and it was actually that long ago because um, it feels like maybe a year and a half ago. But yeah, it was um, obviously a special, special day for, for myself and obviously the whole country as well. Why do you think you did win that night? Um, the belief we had. Um, I think in that tournament, everything kind of just went our way. Um, we never, we well, still do. We never feel like we're going to lose a game. Uh, we've got. Um, incredible amount of self belief within the team, even though we went a goal down really early on and it could have been an ugly scoreline. Um, but I think the belief and the momentum we had during the tournament was something that kind of pushed us further. What did you make of the reaction in England? Obviously, you've lived in England a long time now, worked, I guess, in England for a long time. You know, the reaction over here was. Um, Pretty dramatic, I suppose. Um, what did what did you make of that? Is it almost insulting, like, but to think that Iceland couldn't beat England? No, I think England, and obviously the media and everything with with the England with the England team over the years has always been the same. You always expect um, a high standard from the team, of course, with the players England have had in in the last. 50, 100 years or something. Um, you've got some top, top players. And of course, when you come up against a, a small nation as Iceland is, then you probably expect to to qualify it through to the next round. Um, but no, I wasn't, I wasn't surprised. We knew that the pressure was going to be on, on England and we basically had nothing to lose. What has been the legacy of not just that result, but that tournament on football in Iceland? Uh, I mean, especially during the time of the Euros and, and then the World Cup, I think this, uh, the interest in football has obviously increased. Um, I think we've gotten a lot of young kids into football. Um, I think watching us on TV in the Euros and in the World Cup, it kind of... Um, this is, it just brings younger kids, more young kids into football, which is going to benefit us in the, in the future. At what point in that game did you know you had them? Did you, did, could you see on the faces maybe of the England players that I don't know, like they could almost visualise the next day's papers and the panic was setting in? No, literally when the referee blew the final, the final whistle. We were, <laughs> I think we were defending for probably 90 minutes of that game. So, yeah, I think we were literally hanging on. I think he had a couple of corners and, and a few attacks in... in in injury time, so it was literally as soon as the whistle went, uh, you know, they started believing it's, it's happening. Something just popped into my head about your dad in the in the picture of your shoulder. It, I read something, I hope this is right now, I brought it up. It, he's Iceland's best darts player, is that right? <laughs> he's, he's right. Uh, he started playing darts a long, long time ago uh, when darts was not very popular in Iceland and... Yeah, he's been he's been champion of Iceland uh, quite a few times. Um, he is, of course, he's he's getting older now, and there are more players and younger players coming in. So he's got a very good competition in, in Iceland. Are you one of those younger players, Gilfie? Not yet. Uh, give me a few years. Maybe after my career, I'll, I'll get into darts a little bit more. And is is he a kind of quite a well known fisherman as well? Uh, yeah, so my granddad was a, was a fisherman, my dad was a fisherman. Um, I've been trying to keep him away from, from uh, fishing, but that's, that's what he loves. I wanted to play a bit more golf and 
and darts. But um, yeah, that's that's what he that's what he's been doing his whole life. So how did you how did you first end up coming to England then? Because um, if I remember rightly, your brother posted a picture of you um, by the Dixie Dean statue when I was in like 10, 11, and you were a ball boy, I think, in the game that day. So when did the interest in English football start and how how did you make that journey for, like, from Iceland to England? Um, I think my interest in, in football in, in England started very young. Um, the Premier League was on TV. My dad and my brother used to watch it, so... Naturally, I sat there on a, a Saturday and a Sunday watching football with them. Um, but yeah, my dad and my brother took me over to England uh, a few times um, to train with various clubs. Um, my brother ended up sending a, basically a CD to a, to a few clubs of me um, playing football. The old yeah, days I mean, of CDs, eh? <laughs> exactly, yeah. It seems like a long, long time ago. Um, but it ended up getting a trial at, at a few places and then ended up signing for Reading. Wow. So that really is sort of, was it, like, do you feel like you achieved like an impossible dream then? Was there anyone that you looked at in Iceland who had done it before and you think, okay, yeah, it can be good. Like I don't know, Idega Johnson, something like that. Yeah, we've, we had a, we've had a, quite a few players. Um, we've had, at my time at Reading, we had two players, uh, Inky Martin and, and Gunnison. Uh, we had Adiga Johnson, Herman O'Reilly, Heide Hulkerson. Uh, so we had we had a few players to kind of look up to and see it is possible to get into the Premier League. Of course, um, back then, it, obviously, it was a bit more difficult, I think, to kind of make the step. Um, but thankfully, we had CDs and, and my brother was able to, to make one and, and send it to Reading and, and sign for them. So what has life been like without football, Gilfie? Uh, very different. Um, very calm. Uh, it's strange kind of staying at home, not thinking about the, the game on the weekend and how you're preparing and, and just everything about the routine that goes into making sure that you feel the best and you perform the best on a, on a weekend. Uh, but it's been refreshing as well, um, getting time to to kind of spend time with your with your family and and just think about all the stuff. So I think myself and, and the other boys are now really looking forward to getting back into training. That, I mean, that was going to be my next question. And it's obviously, it's a more difficult question for you to answer than it sounds like. But are you ready to go back? Are you happy to go back? Yeah, of course. I, I know that the, the club is obviously working with both the Premier League and, and, and the government to kind of, make it as safe as, as possible for everyone and all that. Um, it will be in groups of how many players I don't know. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, I trust the medical staff and the, and the Premier League and the government more than anything. So I'm, I'm happy to go back to training because it, it is more fun than training on your own for, for another few weeks. But as I say, it, it's going to be done like with every, every step that are going to be taken, that are going to be taken to make sure that we are all safe. So what has, you just talked about training on your own, what has an average day been like in, in terms of like your professional life and, and training? What have you done? <clears throat> um, it's been running, uh, been in the gym. Um, there's a lot of stuff in the gym that I've been doing. I've uh, been lucky enough to be able to run on a golf course on a couple of days. Don't do that anymore. You'll get hit by a ball. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Back out there. Um, no, I've had to change change places. I'm I'm running on on different places now. So it's been it's been it's been long. It's obviously eight weeks or something. But um, yeah, hopefully it's getting to the end of that now. Yeah. So what is what is the next step? Do you, have you been tested? Do you know like when you're back in at um, Finch Farm? Uh, we got tested, uh, I think, yesterday. Um, we're obviously waiting for the results. Um, and then, I guess, I don't know the next kind of steps for the club and, and for the players, but obviously waiting for the results and, and we'll probably take it from there. To give you a chance to, to take stock a little bit, Gilfie, because maybe personally and as a team, it's, it's like a season a little bit on a knife edge, isn't it? With a strong finish, it's maybe one you can reflect on and be happy with. Um, but at the moment, sitting 12th, we've, we've worked to do, really. 
Yeah, it's not come at the best time. I thought like with the new manager and being there for a, for quite a while, we obviously more than used to what he wants and and we were looking forward to the last what nine games of the season. Uh, we wanted to finish strong, but still got the nine nine games left, so hopefully we can uh, kind of come back into training and, and really finish strongly, as you said. Is it a tricky one for you at all with the new manager? Obviously great to work with a legend like that, but it's been 4-4-2 really ever since Duncan Ferguson had his few games. Is it is it one for you where you just got to find a way to fit into that system? It's maybe not, there's no natural position for you really within that maybe. Um, of course, I have played before Iceland. Um, this is maybe a little bit different. Um, but yeah, uh, not my natural position, but um, I've played most of the games and I've, I think, got used to the playing in a position for him and, and under, under the manager but um, it doesn't give me the chances to go forward as, as much as I'd like um, but it is something different and I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it Did you watch Bundesliga at the weekend? Uh, what's the little bit yeah I saw the, the few clips from the Bayern Munich game um, it is different with no fans I've got to say um, but it, How is it different? Nice. Can you just explain that? I, I, obviously, I mean, we can all see it's different, but for a player out on the pitch, I mean, the 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 people, whatever it is, just tell us what effect they have on a game of football because, you know, we've all been the fans, but very few of us have been the player. Uh, it's going to have a massive effect, I think. Um, obviously, the fans make the atmosphere, uh, they bring a lot of passion to the stadiums and I think the players kind of feed off that um, so yeah of course you wondered what it's going to be like celebrating a goal or if you win with, with no fans in the stadium it's, it's going to be totally different but I think it is nice for the fans to be able to watch football again on TV probably the first step and then hopefully things will kind of move in the, the right direction and hopefully Sooner rather than later, we'll have fans in the stadium. So you're ready to go? Uh, yeah, give me a couple of weeks training with the team and with the boys, and I'll, we'll all be ready. That, I mean, that has, I asked it sort of jokingly, but that has been an issue. How long do you, from as you sit there now, to sort of play in a Premier League match, how long are you going to need to be, to feel good, to be match fit? Um, it's a good question, I think. It all depends how long we're going to train in groups of three or four or, or five players at a time until we're starting training with the, with the full squad. Um, but I'm guessing somewhere around four weeks, maybe. But I think everyone's different. I think each players have their own problems with their bodies or injuries or, or stuff like that. But I've been lucky enough with injuries for my career. So I'll say somewhere around four weeks. Gilfie, very nice to talk to you. Take care of yourself. Thank Looking you. forward to seeing you playing again soon, mate. Thank you. Take care.